with Your Grace is Enough. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. <laughs> That'll get them up. <laughs> Turn the lights off on them. Yeah. going to sing uh, Stand in Your Love, and so I am going to get way out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to try the piano on this one, so, um, yeah, so, <laughs> well, we'll see, we'll see if we're clapping when we're done, uh, but it's called Stand in Your Love, and uh, it's just such a great song, and these are our new songs for this month, and we're really excited about them, so sing with us Amen. as we praise the Lord.
stand a chance when I stand Hey, man, we are. Any day that we can gather together is a good First off, is Illy in here? She is. Illy, just give a quick... ...and give her out of her, if you will, and uh, she did an amazing job, yes. So if you did not get a bulletin, please see Illy, all right? So next up, just a couple of really quick announcements. Uh, June 5th, which is this Wednesday coming up, it is our... Family game night in the park. Why are we doing that? Thank you. That's right. Why are we doing that? We are going to show the world that you can have fun and still come to church. Amen. You can learn about the Lord and you can have a good time. So invite everybody. That's going to be this Wednesday at 545. Next Thursday, June at 7 o'clock is the real. Yes, Real Women's, I'll have that in the bulletin next week and online. Uh, and then last but not least, Sunday, June 30th, is our second annual Biker Sunday. All right, it's going to be a good time, yes. It's going to be a blast. Um, promise, no Hells Angels will be in attendance. All right. First couple days of August, so uh, be sure to uh, sign up if you'd like to help and weren't able to attend the Wednesday. Uh, 
uh, that'll be a fun time. All right, next is amazing. We have a newest addition into the way. Give me the full name. Presley Williams Stubbs. Craig's baby girl, which was born. But let's, uh, let's pray for them real quick as we go along. We'll have the ushers come while I pray real quick and uh, collect the morning tithes and offering as well. Here we go. Father God, we just love you. We praise you, God, for this amazing family. Lord, that you bless this amazing that he's going to do, Lord. Bless these parents. Father God, we just love you so much. We praise you. Bless this offering and keep us safe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Give him a big old hand. Come on now. You get really. All right. Uh, please stand after you give your tithes and offerings and we're going to sing King of My Heart. So please worship with us. right? Amen. <laughs> now, I may be a little partial, and uh, Christy's going to give me the look. Man, we know we all know what the look is, right, when it comes to our wives. I'm so sorry, Brandon. I think she did an amazing job on the keyboard. Come on now. 
Now let's take it one more step. I think the band did an amazing job. Absolutely. God is good. You know, in the Bible, we're talking about holiness today, if you didn't see on Facebook. And in, in the Bible, the very first song was given by Moses in Exodus chapter 15. And the very last song in the Bible that's sung or talked about is in Revelation chapter 15. And they're both the same song, and it's holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, right? It's amazing things. We are going to be singing in heaven forever. And if you're like me and you can't sing or carry a tune in a bucket, however you want to say it, it's okay. We'll be singing in heaven. I'll have that perfected voice, and uh, it's going to be good. But no, we've got three different, generally with churches and with uh, pastors, you generally have three types of, of ministries. What do I mean by that? You've got an evangelistic approach to things. You've got a an, an, an look at how we look at life, how we should live our lives in every day. Then you have another one where um, sometimes they, th- those things are, if you will, instead of the gifter. And, and, and quite honestly, in the ministry of this church, what I like to do is um, we get them in. God saves them, right? The Holy Spirit cleans them, as I say. And then we've got to continue living a life, right? We've got to continue to live in this world. So that's where our ministry focuses at, as a ministry in, in general, as a ministry in whole, is that I concentrate or tend to concentrate on three of those, but yet the emphasis is on living everyday life. Because we live in this world, but we're not part of it, right? Paul talks and tells us that when we become a Christian, when we become a Christ. Our, our residency is in heaven. Amen? And that's the great thing about it. So that's kind of a prelude to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, but God is good, and he's good all the time, right? There we go. So if you've got your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones, however you follow along, what we do is a congregational confession, all right? This is just standing on the Word of God. And however you want to follow along, please do. And repeat after me. God, you're a good and loving God. God, you're a good and loving God. Your faithful love endures forever. I will love as your son Jesus loves. This is my Bible and your word for me. I will apply your words to my life. I boldly confess my heart is receptive. I'll never be the same, not today, tomorrow, or forever. Do you believe it, friends? My prayer is that each and every one of you will leave today with something that maybe you needed, all right? Maybe you needed a something. Maybe it was a kind word from a friend sitting next to you. Maybe it was something said about in the prayer. Maybe it was something that you get out of the message. However it is, my prayer is that you will receive something today and that your time here is not wasted. So if you would, join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you, God. And Lord, we come together and we just ask that the Holy Spirit just just fill us, Lord, that, that the Holy Spirit just guides us, that we get with open ears, Lord, and open minds, that we get what you've got for us today. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you take me from me, Lord, and that may the words I speak be yours and yours alone. And Father God, we just love you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Christ's name. And everybody said amen. amen. Really quick before I, got go- before I get going, excuse me, um, if you have a kiddo in children's church, Michelle Neal would like to have a really quick meeting with you directly after service just to get your feedback and uh, see how things are progressing. So that'll be directly after service at um, whatever time that is. I promise I won't keep you all too long. All right. Walking the talk. What does that mean? We've all heard the term walk the walk and talk the talk, right? Sometimes it's so easy for us to talk the talk and not walk the talk though, right? Right? we're all guilty of it. We all have had times in our life where maybe we've given someone some advice where maybe we didn't adhere to that ourselves. Whatever it is, friends, we have got to walk the talk. When we do something as Christ followers, when we profess Jesus as our name, as our Lord and Savior, we need to realize that people are watching us. People are looking how we interact with others. People are seeing how we treat our husbands or wives. People see how we treat our children. People look at everything we do because why? Most of the time they're trying to find a fault, right? Most of the time, maybe they're looking to you as, I don't know, a little part of Jesus. Think about it. There's an old saying, and and we've all heard it before, you may be the only Jesus some may see, amen? Mm -hmm. 
a driver's license tester, told about a teenager who had just driven an almost perfect test. He made his only mistake when he stopped to let me out of the car. After breathing a sigh of relief, the boy exclaimed, I'm sure glad I don't have to drive like that all the time. Now, believe it or not, it's not a joke, but I appreciate you laughing because the first one I told first service was horrible. All right. But it's the truth, right? Think about it. If we know someone is watching us, do we pay a little more attention to how we interact with others? On Wednesdays, sometimes I wear a Jesus shirt, and it's like a Jesus thing, you know, whatever it is. Jesus is my hero with the Captain America, whatever it is, right? I like to wear those. And one thing about it is when I'm wearing that shirt, and I'm in Walmart, or I'm walking around getting whatever I need, I know I've got a target on me, if you will, no pun intended to Captain America, okay? But, but um, we, we, we're being watched. If we're proclaiming Jesus with a t-shirt, we need to also proclaim Jesus when we're not wearing those Jesus t-shirts, Amen. And, and, and like this boy that, that I talked about, I mean, sometimes we're on our best behaviors when we know someone is watching us. Here's what we don't get. God's watching us all the time. Amen? He's watching us when we get in the car and we shut the car door. He's watching us when we're at home and we shut that front door. He's watching us when we're in the front yard, the backyard, the basement, upstairs, whatever it is. He is continually watching us. He's watching us as how we treat our spouses, wives. He's watching you as you treat your husbands. You see, children, I'll take it there. He's watching you and how you talk and interact with mom and dad. We live in a world that will not, does not want to walk the walk and talk the talk. We all love our Instagram, we all love our Snapchat, we all love our Facebook. I talk about social media all the time because it becomes what governs us in a lot of ways. It becomes our morality, if you will, our moral gauge or guide to what the world is. But as I'm going to show you today, Jesus is telling us, God is telling us through his written world that we are supposed to be upside down and inside out of what the world's standard is. And we're not to miss it. If you've ever been anywhere, you always want to fit in, right? Kids, when you start that first day of school, I talk about being a kid because I feel like I'm a kid, but I'm not, all right? I remember starting school, and I remember being so nervous about who I was going to eat with at lunch, who I was going to sit next to during class, right, who I was going to walk with when I got in high school. I worried about all these things because I didn't want to stick out, right? Here's the great thing about God. God says stick out, and you're going to make a better impact on the world. Stick out and show others well, how great I am, how good life is. That's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about holiness. Now, holiness is something we typically don't talk about much in churches. Holiness has got a bad rap, if you will. Let me introduce what we're going to be talking about. So the next few weeks, we're going to go through First and Second Peter, verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Why? Because I think Peter is one of those guys that he started out so rough, right? If we all know anything about Peter, we know that he denied Christ, Three times before the, the rooster crowed, right? We all remember that. Peter, had, he was always, and it reminds me of me, I'm going to be honest with you. He'd open his mouth and just want something to come out. And sometimes what came out wasn't the right thing. You all know me and love me. I do that too, right? I, I identify with him so much, and he, would, uh, he had so much energy to try to do things, but it just didn't always happen. That happens to me quite a bit, I'm going to be honest with you. However, though, the story doesn't stop there. Peter became one of the most amazing preachers in the city of Jerusalem. You see, he was the first preacher, if you will, of the New Testament church in Jerusalem. He had the difficult job, if you will, the difficult duty of taking people that were used to a certain way, Jewishness, okay, and turn them into a Christ follower. Think about it. How many of us go to churches because of grandma and grandpa, mom and dads, and they've told us things that we know, and we think, that's on that, don't we? Peter had the job of showing them a new way, a way filled with grace, a way filled with mercy, given through Jesus Christ and his shed blood. You see, Peter started out weak, but he ended strong. We know that Jesus changed his name from Simon to Cephas, which means what? Rock or Petra, however you want to say it. Jesus could see through who Peter was stumbling and bumbling around to be, When God looks at us, looking at that mirror, and we're seeing what's coming back at us, sometimes we let the world, you're not worthy. 
Sometimes we let the world say, you know what, you're not good looking. Sometimes we let the world say all these things that run through our minds. Friends, I want to tell you something. Today, I want you to stop that thinking. I want you to know that you are a work in progress. We all are. And Peter, in the next coming weeks, is going to show us how we do that. How we can draw closer to the Lord. How we can be who God has called us all to be. Every single one of us has a job, if you will, inside the church and outside the church. Every single one of us have a duty, have a responsibility to do what God has called you to do. To be who God has called you to be. Every single one of us. So my sermon in a sentence for today is this, and it's simple. Holiness is separating the unclean from the clean or our fleshly desire from God's desires. Now, seems a little heavy. This stuff is heavy, all right? Preachers, churches typically don't talk about holiness a whole lot. This is heavy stuff. But I promise you, once you get it, it should start clicking. Prayerfully, it'll make a difference in your life. So if you brought your Bible, please, in whatever version you have, I'll read out of the New Living Translation. It'll be up on the board. We're going to read 16 verses. A little long, but hang in there. We'll get through it. And Peter does it in three different sections, if you will. And I'll cover that in just a minute. Starting chapter 1, verse 1 says this. An apostle of Jesus Christ. We know an apostle is who? Someone that actually walked with Jesus. All right? I am not the apostle Buddy Dockham Jr. I did not walk with Jesus. I walk with him now in spirit. Okay? That applies to us too. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and his spirit has made you and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. Stop right there. Do you ever feel like you can't pray away some of your sin enough? Do you ever feel like you've lived such a horrible life that you can't do anything to ever change that? Friends, I want to tell you something. There's nothing that you can do that will ever keep Jesus away from you. There's nothing you can do that will ever keep God away from you. So let that sink in. Verse 3, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you and for me, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay, and though you're and through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Stop right there. I want to explain that. I want to unpack that a little bit. Peter is not saying you don't receive salvation until Christ comes back. Peter is saying we all are saved, right? And all is going to see when Christ comes back how amazing our salvation is. Verse 6. So be truly glad. This is a, there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. These were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is so wonderful that even the angels are watching these things happen. Verse 13. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the glory, great salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. 
just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. That's a lot. That's a mouthful right there, right? We realize, and we've all heard the term, that God is God and he never changes. God doesn't change because he's perfect. He's holy. And he set a standard for us. He set a standard of holiness. He set a standard that we all should try to do. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower the standard a little bit for us. He knew we would never get there on our own, amen? That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. That's why he gives us the grace and he gives us mercy. And he gives us this through the promise and through Christ's burial, death, and resurrection on the cross. He knew we could not be holy. He knew no one can be holy without grace, without mercy, without Jesus Christ. He gave them. You see, the Israelites, regulations and and if you've ever written wrote, uh, read the bible if you've ever read you are unclean don't come into your house right it's these rules and regulations and we get tired and we're like man it even goes too far to talk about pimples if you got a pimple you go to your house for seven days to make sure it's not leprosy it even says if a piece of leather has leprosy on it. You can't bring it into your house. A spot, whatever it is. God was so detailed in all these things. If it's clean, great. Come on in. If it's unclean, separate it. Remove it from what is holy. We need to realize and understand that we are holy in the fact that we are Christ's followers. Amen? If we've asked Christ to be in our hearts, we are holy through grace, through mercy, in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We've got to get that. See, the world wants to do what? Beat you up all the time, right? You're not worthy. You're a loser. How many times have we seen little kids do this, right? We, we live in that. We're brought up in that. God says, you know what? Embrace being different. Embrace being who you are. Embrace the fact that, you know what? You were created to be separated from this world. You were created to be upside down and inside out, go against the grain of all what the world is. All throughout the Bible, we read that over and over and over again. Yet, what did the Israelites do? They kept running back, right? Oh, you took us out of Egypt, and oh, it was great, right? We had vegetables and fruits. We had all these amazing things. They forgot to think about the fact they were slaves and were beaten and were whipped and were made to do all these things over and over again. How many times when we're going through a situation that's tough in life, do we look back and think, boy, if I could go back and do that again, right? Boy, if I only had this, if I only had this, do this so many times we want to run back to what is comfortable for us sometimes we want to run back to the things that we're familiar with god's telling us take a stand embrace your difference in it your difference We see Peter introduces this letter to the various churches. And if you've read your Bible, you know that is how we know Peter wrote this. Because Peter said, hey, you know what? I wrote this. In verses 3 through 5, Peter is telling us to be thankful for our salvation. Let me ask you something, church. Are you thankful to know that you are going to Do you realize? Are you thankful for it? There should not be a day goes by that we don't thank God that when we close our eyes upon this earth, we are going to open them in the arms of Jesus. No matter what's going on, we are going to be in heaven one day. We should be thankful for our salvation. In verses 6 through 12, Peter is telling us to be thankful for the trials that come our way. Why? Because in those trials is where we have faith and we trust God. Amen? When we're in the valley is where we are like, God, it's all you. Right? Think about it. We're not, th we're not getting on our knees when, when we've got extra money left over on our paychecks. We're not getting on our knees when everybody's sick. We should be, but most of the time we wait until we're in that valley. Most of the time we wait until we have a deep need that, we, that only God can do. We've got some horrible sickness going around in this church right now. We've got surgeries coming along. Not sickness that you can catch. Let me just be straight here, all right? You're not going to walk out here and be infected. What I mean by that is we've got people that are fighting some, some terrible illnesses, some terrible sicknesses, and we've got to lift them up. I'm going to give a plug for our Facebook page. Really get on there and, and, and pray. We've got a lot of people that need some prayers. I'll get into that in just a minute. But 
God has told us to separate ourselves from the world. Why am I saying all this? If you were to do a study on the word holy or holiness, it comes from the Greek word koinu. Koinu. It means polluted, all right? And, and what we are to do, or defiled. In our context, the word holiness means a cutting off or a separation from. If you've ever cut vegetables, now I'm not a chef or anything, but I can cut some celery up or something sometimes. You cut and you push it away, right? You cut, you push it away. You cut and you push it away. Church, that's what we need to do when it comes to the things of this world. We need to separate ourselves from the things that God says is not good for you. We, we need to, to fixate on what God has for us to do. Peter's talking about our actions. He's talking about our thoughts. He's talking about the things we look at, the things we listen to, the things we let our children watch, the things we let our children listen to on the radio. Parents, I'm telling you what, you got a tough life. It's, it's, it's not easy being a parent, amen? And you can only do the best you can because what happens when they pull out of that driveway when they turn 16? You got to give them to God, amen? What they listen to, what they do, what they watch is between them and God. And that's where you can have faith and say, God, I'm giving them to you. But when they're in your care, when they're in your circle of influence, you need to do the best you can to help them be holy. Separate them from the world. Separate them. Take them away. Don't make your house just as accessible to the things that God says not to as they can go to a friend's house that's not a Christian. Think about it, friends. It's a responsibility being a parent. We are to separate ourselves. We are to try to be holy. Now, I want to explain this and, and delve into this a little more. Sometimes we hear the word sanctification and holiness go hand in hand. Sanctification is the process of becoming holy. Holiness is separation. It's taking away the sin from who we are. We are holy. We are amazing people through Jesus Christ. Amen? You are worthy. You are awesome. You are amazing. I could go on and on and on. Don't let anybody tell you any different. When you look in that mirror, don't you dare tell yourself what others have told you. God created and made you a certain way and rock what you got. All right? Rock what you got. Now, here we go. What holiness isn't? Let's talk about that. What holiness isn't? Holiness sometimes is considered in the church world. Long skirts, long hair that's never been cut. Men with suits, staunch faces, right? Can't have fun in a church. We're here to learn about God. Bologna, that's a French word, okay? You, we, we have fun at church, don't we? Thank you. <laughs> Come on now, we got to have fun in church. I know this is tough stuff, but that's what it is. And sometimes people take it and they run with it. They give themselves these restrictions and rules that God, we don't live in that society, right? Now, if, if that's your thing, go for it, right? That's, that's cool. It doesn't matter. People always ask me, what, what, what can I wear at church? Clothes. Just don't come naked, okay? That's the only thing I got. That's all you got to do. Just, just have something on. Doesn't matter. Wear clothes. I am not, I don't rock a suit. I will on occasion. It's typically a funky one, right? But, but I don't because I want to be approachable. This is one thing I want to say. I am no better than you and you are no better than me. Amen? We are all on the same team. We just have different positions, all right? Think about it. Every single one of us. Why am I going there? Have we all met a super Christian before in your life? Come on now. Some of us have been hurt, turned away from church because of them, right? They rock in this bumper sticker that says, I'm not perfect, I'm just saved, right? As they cut you off in the Walmart parking lot, right? They walk around with an air about themselves. I'm holy, I'm separated from you, right? Sometimes we do these things. Perfectly we don't. Or at least we know someone possibly that could be that way. God does not like haughtiness, and that's what that is. That's haughtiness. Let me give you a scripture. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19 says this. There are six things the Lord hates, no seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. Some of this sounds like some people that maybe we've been hurt by, right? And especially in the church. You see, when we hear this, when we read this, when we know this, we need to understand God does not like arrogance. 
He give us story after story after story of how we're supposed to what? Get down to someone else's level, right? And bring them up with us. Every time. The Good Samaritan was an example given by Jesus. God sent his son to live a life here on earth where he should have been elevated to rock star status, right? But he wasn't. He was treated horrible, treated horrible. He was constantly, constantly mocked. We all know how it ends before he is crucifixion. He pulled his beard out. Now, I don't know if you've ever, ladies, you wouldn't know anything about this, but beards hurt, okay? If you've ever pulled a beard or, or you know, I, I wake up in the morning, and my beard sometimes is like Velcro, right? I'm taking all kinds of stuff off of it. When you pull on it, it hurts. Christy's going, oh, Lord, not, not good, all right? Fuzz, fuzz, yeah, all right, fuzz. L- no, no. Lola's toys, probably, Christy's dog, that's more than it is. Her little whoobies. Anyways, but, I mean, he was treated so horrible. This was the son of God in flesh and was treated. But you know what? Every time, what did Jesus do? We talk about separation. We talk about cutting away from Did Jesus not go around the sinners? Did Jesus not go around those that needed him? You see, that's the difference from a super Christian and someone who is just trying to be holy. We need to go to the places where the lost are, amen? We need to invite them into the church. We've got to do these things. We don't put ourselves above. We bring ourselves to. We give them the word of God. We let God do the work. God's got to do the heavy lifting, friends. We can't make anybody become a Christian. We can't do anything other than show them the love of Jesus that he wants us to be and do it in a way that is holy. You can't come up, I'm I'm old school, I grew up in the 80s, right? You can't pull up in your truck, rock an NWA, and invite somebody to church, all right? Let's be honest. You can't do it. It, They're going to look at you like, are you serious? We have got to live a holy life, and we've got to be who God has called us to be. We're not stuffy. Right? We just have to separate ourselves from the bad stuff and be happy with who we are. Holiness is what God has called us to be. Next, God is our moral gauge, not society. Not Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, not anything other than what God says. Let me ask you a question. How are you going to know what God wants you to do if you don't read your Bible? How are you going to know what God wants you to do and doesn't want you to do if you don't hit your knees? How are you going to know and do what God wants you to do if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to guide you? You're not going to, friends. That's what holiness isn't. What is holiness? Holiness is cutting away from the world's behaviors and customs. It's, it's being different and it's being thankful for who you are. It's being thankful to know that your treasure is in heaven, not by what you drive or what you pull into at night. That's where our treasure is, friends. My greatest fear, me and Christy was talking about this on the way up today. If you're a Christian here today, you've already been judged. You're going to go to heaven, all right? We're, we're discussing this on Wednesday nights. However, you will be rewarded by what you've done here on earth. And it scares me, and I'll, I'll tell you why. What if I missed an opportunity to be a witness for Jesus somewhere? What if I, in my nervousness, in my trying not to not trying to be accepted by the world if, if I lost out on an opportunity to invite somebody to church. That scares me more than anything. I know where I'm going. But I don't know what my rewards are going to look like when they're burned and tested by the fire. That's what concerns me. And I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm trying to be the best I can be. But I stumble and I fall every day. Israel was set apart from the other nations. And they kept wanting everything everybody else had, didn't they? They wanted a king. God said, no, I want to be your king. No, we want a king. So they got Saul. Boy, he was a number, wasn't he? If you know anything about the Bible, Saul was not the kind of guy you want to be a king. God said, you're going to be in the wilderness. I'm going to give you something to eat. You're not just going to wander around. I'm going to give you food. He gave him manna from God himself. You know, mania, ma- mania that's, that's the Spanish version. <laughs> Mana means, what is it? We still don't know what it is, but we can think that it's like cornflakes, if you will. God gave them manna from heaven. He fed them personally from heaven. And he gave them one instruction. Just gather what you need. 
So they would gather, some of them gathered a whole bunch. And what happened the next day? It rotted and worms was in there. All these things took place. Because why? We're constantly at battle with ourselves, are we not? As spirit people, when we enter in to a relationship with Jesus, our flesh is telling us to do something, and the Holy Spirit, our spirits are telling us to do something else. Amen? We're constantly fighting. We're constantly at war. We're constantly battling. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know and disappoint you. You're going to do it till you take your last breath on earth. You will continually do it. However, we, our goal is to be holy, and we will not be holy until we're in heaven. And we're going to be holy, and I'm going to thank God because, man, I hate messing up. And I mess up all the time. I want to be the best Buddy Dockham Jr. I can be. I want to be the best representation of Jesus I can be to the world. Let me give you something else. Paul, talking to the church in Thessalonica, says this. And I give you two versions because the New Living really, they sum it up nicely, but it doesn't have the impact the, K, the King James Version does. Let me read it to you. First Thessalonians 4, 7, and 8 says this. For God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who, who hath also given us his Holy Spirit. Let's meet it up a little bit. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. You get that? When we go against what God tells us to, we're going against God himself. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world looks like on social media. It should not matter. The only people we should be concerned with, the only person, excuse me, is God in heaven. Amen? That's, that's who we're accountable to. And we get so mixed up. We get so, uh, I just, man, I got to compare myself to Joe. And Joe's got to compare him. Not Rachel's Joe, but, you know, a different Joe. But, but we've got to do all these things because, you know what? Well, if Joe does it, then, then I can do it, right? No. God says, you know what? It's between me and you, buddy. And when you stand before me, it's me and you, dude. It's nobody else. So can I tell you something? Separate yourself from the things of this world, friends. Separate it from the uncleanliness. Separate it from all the things that you know when the Holy Spirit convicts you not to do. Don't do it. Again, we're a work in progress. But Paul spells it out perfectly. We are called to be holy. But nature is something else, isn't it? Our flesh, our desires are something else. St. Augustine said this, and I've got the quote up here. It says this, right is right. Even if no one else is doing it, wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing it. So let me ask you something. Everyone, why do we try to fit in, right? We need to get along. Let me retract that. But we don't need to fit in. We don't need to be like our neighbors in the workplace. We don't need to be like our neighbors in the school. We don't need to be like whoever that is a bad influence on this. As Christians, we are to be holy and not haughty. We are to be holy and not judgmental. We are to be holy and not stuck up when someone says or does something unchristian. It's tough, right? Holy, set apart, not better than. I like it when people talk to me and I'm a Christian and I'm a pastor and I, I don't let them know that up front and they, they talk to me and, and man, they got the words flying. Cuss words are just going everywhere, you know, and they're talking about all this stuff and I don't say anything. I just go along with it and then... It always turns around most of the time to come back to God. Then I can throw out there, yeah, I'm a pastor. And they're like, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it, man. You know, if, if, if that's not you, again, that's between you and God. I'm going to be I'm gonna be cool with you, you know. I'm going to show you that love of Jesus because just because I don't go along with you and join in on those words and do these things, right, we don't want to do this. We still want to give him the love of Jesus. Amen. And it's not easy, is it? It's hard. Sometimes it's so hard to show others the love of Jesus. Sometimes God has put those people in your life when that phone rings and you answer it and you're like, Lord, give me strength, right? Sometimes you got to go into work and you got to say, Lord, give me strength. All these things take place, but friends, here's the gist of this whole thing. Separate yourself. If you know something is unclean, if you know something is not what it should be. Take it away from you. Take it away from your kids. Oh, you're going to be the uncool parent in the, in the parent pool, right? Who cares? 
Who cares? You are responsible for your children unto God. Think about that. Now again, when they hit the road at 16 or wherever and they're out on their own, you can't control them. So let's sum it up with this. How do we work on being holy? How do we get there? Why? We do because God is holy and that's what God has called us to do, amen? God has called us to be holy because he is perfect and that's why he is the perfect judge. That's why he never changes. That's why he is worthy to judge who we are, to judge what we do. So how do we work on that? We read our Bible, we pray, and we seek God. Read our Bible, seek God, and pray. That is how you know what God is telling you to do. Now, God takes it a step further as well. My holiness is different from Christy's holiness. What do I mean by that? Christy may be convicted not to do something that doesn't bother me at all. And I may be convicted by something that bothers her or drives her nuts. Friends, we've got to walk our own walk. However, if we are married, if we are together, here's where it comes into play. You've got to support that other person. Think about that. You can't be like, I'm running my own race. Pastor Buddy said I'm running my own race. It's between me and God. Yeah, it is. But you know what? You're married, so it's both of your alls now, okay? When we are married, when we enter into the covenant relationship of marriage, it's three parts. It's you, her, or him, and it's God. All that becomes part of it. What drives her nuts should drive you nuts. What drives him nuts should drive you nuts. Read your Bible, pray, and seek God. Otherwise, you're only going to know what I tell you here on Sundays. And maybe God's got something different for you to quit doing. Holiness is turning the TV off when things get dicey. Holiness is turning the radio off when the words become unbecoming. Holiness is respecting and honoring, here we go, your spouse, kids, it's your parents. I'm a kid still, my mom's still alive. And it's parents honoring your children. It's a three-way street. You get it? We are to honor those because that is, that is holiness. Holiness is standing up for marriage between a man and a woman. I'm just going to say it. The world, you take that subject alone right there. The world is upside down and inside out. That's not a marriage, friends. I'm sorry. Not in the eyes of God. It may be legally. There's a meme going around. I think uh, Sid actually shared it first or somebody seen it just because we don't stand with what they are going along with doesn't mean we hate them amen it just means we choose to separate ourselves from that particular sin and i and i promise you and and i'll say this i'm not a homophobe i love everybody all right i mean that because you know why the bible tells me it's wrong amen the bible tells me it's wrong doesn't matter what buddy thinks it matters what god says it matters what his word tells us to do i choose to separate that i've been asked to host 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 gay marriages and things like that and i'm not on this kick i'm just saying and that's hard for me i'm going to be honest with you it's hard for me because i'm a people pleaser right but i'm accountable to god first not to man and i've had to have those conver- those difficult conversations with people i've had to say you know what that's not what my bible says My Bible says this, and I show them. Church, let me ask you something. Praise team can come forward. What in your life is unclean that needs separated from where you're at today? And I think every single one of us can identify an area of our life, or maybe several in our lives, where we need to separate ourselves. We're not better than, we're equal to, but we are called to separate ourselves out from what God has called to be holy. Again, holiness is something we don't hear a lot about. And it's unachievable in our fleshly lives. But we will be holy one day. Just because we can't achieve it here on earth doesn't mean we shouldn't try, amen? We need to think holy thoughts. We need to do holy acts. Not better than, equal to, just different. As they get ready to play, I'd like, if everybody would just stand up. And right where you're at, just seek the Lord in your life. I never want to end a service without giving someone that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord of life. I want to give you that opportunity here today. Also, the Bible says in James 5, if if someone among you is sick and would like to be prayed for or anointed with oil, we do that here as well. It's what the Bible tells us to do. These altars are going to be open. If you want to come down and if you want to pray and give it to God, please feel that freedom too. doesn't matter who's sitting next to you, in front of you, and back of you. 
Everything about this church service is between you and God and you alone. Psalms 145.18 says, The Lord is near to all who call upon him, and to all who call upon him, he is truth. The song is called Surrounded, and this is how we fight our battles. Jesus as your Savior today, friends? Are you fighting a battle in your house that you just need that touch from God? Why don't you come forward? Why don't you grab your neighbor? Why don't you say, hey, will you pray with me? Grab someone and just say, God, I can't do it anymore. Maybe you're struggling in an area of your life. Maybe you've tried so many times and you just seem like you can't get through this situation. You can't separate yourself. Friends, today's that day where you can have victory in the name of Jesus. You can have that victory. That's up to you. What are you this waiting for? God is here and He is in our midst. The Holy Spirit is here. What are you waiting for, friends? What are you going through where you just need that touch from God? Why would you saw yourself out? Grab someone and come to the altar. We will pray over you and we will let God anoint you. The Holy Spirit will rise up in you and you will be so much better when you leave here today. I promise you. Just let loose. It doesn't matter. but I've asked Rachel to come up here. Her mom is in the hospital, Linda. We're just, she's having a rough time right now. We just want to, if you would, because of the new baby, we just want you, if you would, would you stretch your hands out towards Rachel as we finish praying? And Rachel's going to intercede for her mom, Linda, and we're just going to lift her up and we're going to finish out the service. 
Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, and we just ask right now, Lord, that you just reach out through Rachel, God, and intercede for Linda. Heavenly Father, may you just touch her in every way, God. May you be with the physicians. May you be with the doctors, Lord. May you be with the nurses. Lord, there is nothing too big to bring before you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we claim it. God, your Holy Spirit is there with Linda, Lord. She is an amazing woman of Christ. And Lord, we just ask right now that your healing hand be upon her, Lord. Father, that, that it guides the doctor's hand as, as, the, as they deal with all these situations, Lord. Everything that's going on. Father, I ask that you be with Rachel, Lord. That you be with Tony. That you be with everybody, Lord, involved in this. Father, I ask for peace and comfort, Lord. Again, we ask for healing. Father, we thank you so much. We can claim healing in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us by his stripes we are healed, and we claim that promise, God. Father, right now, Lord, I just ask that you just, that you just touch Linda, God, as she is in the hospital. I just ask that you again just be through Rachel, God. May you just guide her and Sarah, her sister, Lord, as they go through this difficult time. Father God, I ask, so ask Lord, that you, that you be with gather together today. Father, may you just bless us and guide us, Lord. Everything we do, may we just glorify and honor you. Help us to just know, God, that we are holy before you, Lord, and you have high expectations. Help us to also know and understand, God, that you know what? There is nothing you would ask us to do that we cannot do in the name of Jesus. Father God, we love you so much. I ask that you be with each and every household that's represented here today. Father, may you be with the turmoil, Lord, that's in our hearts. Maybe it's not been verbalized, God, whatever it is. Father, I ask, Lord, that you be with Chloe, that you be with Craig, Craig and Lara's baby. Father God, be with Cody and Peyton's beautiful, amazing son, Lord. God, we need you. We all need you. And I just ask, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, we leave here today, God, that we ask ourselves one question. God, what can I do for you today? How can I further the kingdom? And in response, we can say, God, I know you've already got it taken care of. Father, I know it's already been handled. And we can have the faith to trust in you, God, and to know who you are. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Glory to God in the highest. All right. If you've got a kiddo here today that is in Children's Church, we would love for you to stay for just a few minutes. Um, otherwise, don't forget next Wednesday, meet us at the park. Let's have a blast, all right? Go with God and have a blessed day.